Yep, yeah. Dr. George, we're, we're live. If you can kindly introduce the topic and begin, that'd be great. Good. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God, the Blessed Trinity, is one God. Amen. Tonight, our talk is very precise and very condensed. The work of the Holy Spirit in the human heart. I became aware of that many years ago as I struggled as a Christian trying to see how I walk daily with the Lord, our Savior and our God, Jesus Christ. We need in our time, 21st century, maximum clarity. There is no need for vagueness. And we have to abandon the common, not because it's wrong, but not to use it excessively to cover up our lack of knowledge. Such as, people say, accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And it means, generally speaking, in a rather common way, give your cons consent, your approval, that he is your Lord and your Savior. And they regard this as the point of conversion. It is and it is not. It is the beginning of our conversion since many are baptized as infants and have grown up in a secular environment that does not give to God a prominent place in their social life. This is the case. And I would say maybe 50%, maybe more than that. People grow up in a Christian family, in a Christian church too, but really never made a personal commitment. They float in the general teaching of the community and then comes a point where they like to make a commitment and regard this as the beginning of their Christian life. I have no problem with that, provided that this does not deny the gift and the grace they have received in baptism. We have to talk about baptism later on. But that is in itself my consent, my obedience, my love, even my self-surrender to the Lord must be very precise. It must be spelled out clearly rather than being said generally. And I personally have been through that as a Christian, though I have an advantage over the 50% because I was baptized when I was adult. And I passed through the catechism as a grown-up person and with my own free choice, I became a Christian, though I was born in a Christian family. It's a long story that's not necessary. But tonight, I want to look at four important elements. And all of them are of great importance in my life in my personal life and in your personal life, they are part of the way we grow up and mature as Christians. 
The first one is when I surrender my life to Christ, I have been given the grace of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave us the humanity of Jesus through the concept, his conception in the Virgin Mary. The Holy Spirit anointed him at the River Jordan. And the Holy Spirit was uh, in him when he was crucified. And the Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. These are the declarations of faith that runs through the Gospels and the letters of Paul. But these are not just statements about what actually happened in history. They are about us, about you and about me. Things that happened to Christ are the very foundation of our life. It's the spirit of the Father that gives us Jesus. Then I better know Christ through the Holy Spirit. What does this mean? We live in a time where the printed word and the spoken word has taken almost every channel of our life. And we think that we can reach truth through our studies. Sometimes it is possible. But there is the spirit of truth who can teach us truth. There are many books about Jesus. Some of them are fatally wrong. They don't show any respect, any love, any understanding of basic facts about the life of Jesus. Why is that? Because the writer has used the textual approach to Christ not the spiritual approach to Christ. Textual approach is to collect data. Historical or non-historical, that's not important. But texts, one after the other, squeeze them hard in order to reach a conclusion. Very nice journey. Very tiring, but very nice. But at the end of the day, what we have arrived at is an idea about a person who lived in history. But the Spirit's way is we arrive at the Lord who is present, alive, with me is the weakest link, in me is the greatest link. And they go together, with me and in me. Christ is in me, the hope of glory, says Paul. And the Spirit declares that to me. Declares that in the love I have for my enemies. I forgive to become like Christ. I pray in order to become the child of God, just like Christ. I was given a, an exercise by my mentor when he asked me to write my personal prayers on papers. I did. And he read most of them and said to me, okay, fine, George, what is the difference between a prayer of a child and a prayer of a slave? Most of the lines I read in your paper or papers reveal a slave, a face of a slave. I want to see the faith 
the iman of a child of ibn how do you pray as God's son I said actually I never asked myself this question and you have to give me time to think and he said yes stay here with us as long as you like but come up with a an answer that makes me feel comfortable that you know your place in God in God and he said it three times as his child like Jesus who is in the Father and you are also in the Father and he added by the Holy Spirit oh well, what is that that makes me move to point two I like a systematic treatment in order not to forget and in order to remain on the track also to be like Christ in the Father and to receive that gift from the Spirit means practical things not only to love the enemies and to pray for them but the most important change in my life and this is very delicate it haunts me from time to time is that my life does not come from food or drinks or salary or job or health or the body is God's gift this is a great shift that is badly needed and this is the true conversion my life is a gift from God do not be afraid of those who kill the body as our Lord said why cause life my life your life a life of a Christian a disciple of Jesus does not come from the body our life depends 90% of the body indeed we even can become slaves to the body but that is the true conversion that's what the spirit gives me to be alive by the spirit mm -hmm. in spite of illness in spite of health problems in spite of all the difficulties that I encounter every day difficulties come yes that's normal in any human society it's normal for one of your colleagues one of your superiors to do something against you nothing unusual about it to be hated by other people who may even like to kill you is quite normal so we have to live the life that the Spirit gives to us what is it number one after I am convinced that my life comes directly from God is that it is actually eternal life it's not temporary it cannot die is eternal number two 
is that this life I received from God is parallel, and this is from St. Athanasius, this is not Joel Vivaoui, in his uh, third discourse against the Arians. He speaks of our humanity as being divinized and becomes parallel to the humanity of the soul incarnate. And that's the work of God. No one can make himself divine. No one can. But deification which is given to you and to me is a gift. And those who fight it do not know, I don't think they are, do not know that the deification is a way of divine manifestation of the divine love. That God loves us so much that he does not want us to remain in our earthly physical state of life. He wants to transform that earthly bodily state into a divine one and keep it created. What is, what has being created cannot be uncreated. Forget it. I'm not going to tell you why, because that is obvious, but I will say why the un what why the why the created cannot be uncreated, why the human cannot lose its life and become divine, because to become divine is a God's gift. And God created us to be a creature and we have to stay as a creature because that is the purpose for which God has created us. The prayer of a slave is asking for needs. Work, money, health, marriage, divorce. Buying a car, going abroad for a visit, and so forth. These are needs. Not bad. Not wrong either. But they lower our rank to the earthly one. Do we need to transcend that into the, the child who calls God Abba, like Daddy in English? In Gethsemane, when our Lord said, not my will, but your will, he actually made his will in harmony with the will of the Father. He did not lose his freedom, but harmonized that freedom with the freedom of the Father. And that's a maximum state of love. I like the old Arabic story. I quoted it yesterday to a couple from Persia who were visiting us about Qais, Majnoon Layla. He went and knocked on her door and from behind the door Layla said, who, who is that? And Qais said, Qais. So she refused to open the door. So he walked away and was meditating why she refused and then came back and knocked on the door and Layla said, who is that? And he said, it is me, Layla. I am you. I am you was a dissertation submitted to Harvard long time ago by Carl Morris on that sense of being the other in the uh, Christian writers and in the mystics and in modern psychology. Beautiful piece of work actually. I am you, he said early by, by Jesus himself. Whatever you have done to those 
little ones who believe in me, you have done it to me. And say to Saul on the way to Damascus, why do you persecute me? Because we are the body of Christ and he is the head. I was overjoyed when I had I heard uh, Matt al Miskin, our great man, saying, Bethlehem is the birthplace of redeemed humanity. The fundamentalists among our people uh, in the Coptic Church, especially the clergy, said, Ah, 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 Matt al Miskin uh, is a heretic because he is saying that we are born of the Virgin Mary. He didn't say that. He said the second Adam, Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem in order that we may be born in Bethlehem. To have life, origin, not in the first Adam anymore, but in the second Adam, Jesus Christ. To pray like a son is to read the scriptures and to seek the meaning of the scriptures from the economia, not squeezing the texts very hard. I'll give you a good example. Two verses that were disturbing the universal church in the fourth century. The one was the words that actually behind the Aryan heresy. My father is greater than me. And the Aryans applied that to the divinity of Jesus. Forgetting the occasion, forgetting the reason, forgetting the goal. Did, did you notice? Forgetting the occasion and the reason and the goal. For Santa Sanas is a great the occasion was Christ talking about the rejection of the human of the humans, the Israelis, who refused to accept him. And the reason is to say that I am incarnate. And the purpose is to say, I come to reveal the Father to you. This is the meaning of the words, of the verse. Second one is in Acts, chapter 3, where Peter is saying, Christ whom you have crucified God made him Lord and Savior. And say, ah, he was not Lord and being made Lord, it means he is not equal to the Father. No. He is Lord, Lord himself. And because he Lord himself, the Father made him again Lord. He did not lose his lordship or his power to be a savior. So, textual Christianity vis-a-vis -vis Christianity that comes from the wisdom of the Spirit, where the texts are part of the plan of the economy, plan of salvation. The spirit plants in us four important elements, all based on our human nature. He rejuvenates our love for the Lord, revisits our desire for freedom, 
and inspire us to be unique and special, which we call holiness. Strange enough, he even makes us mortal beings. Say the truth at the cost of our life. To be martyrs sometimes, or to be thrown out by society. Imagine flesh and blood can say the truth. But the spirit of truth dwells in us to bear witness. And we inwardly feel peace and joy, feel stability, have a perception that what we are saying is true, and refuse a false teaching. During the trouble in uh, Azzawa al-Hamra in Cairo, Back in the 70s, I was still in Egypt. And a lot of Christians actually were killed by the Muslims, mobs who attacked them. And we went and collected bodies and two stories that stuck in my heart forever. A little boy, 17 years old, working in, uh, in a shop. They lit a fire, big fire, and said, if you don't confess Islamic, say a shahadatin, you know, uh, we will burn you alive. And carried him and put his feet in the fire, and he refused. And then put the whole of his leg in, his fire, in the fire. And then as they were fed up with him, they put all his body in the fire and he was burned alive. What gave that boy the courage to endure such suffering? What gave Stephen, the early martyr, to die for Christ, stoned? is that stability which is given by the Spirit. It's not the work of flesh and blood. It's the work of God. The other one is the priest, Gubriel Abdel Mutagalli, who happened to be from Upper Egypt visiting some people in Azawa al-Hamra. And the Muslims came and um, attacked the house where he was and told him, to say the Islamic creed, he refused. So they smashed his head with axes. I went with Yusuf Mansour, our archdeacon, to the morgue to receive the body. There was hardly anything left of the head of this priest. Ubrah Abdel Mutagalli is a name, stays in my heart. Why? Because it's no longer believing in an idea, but adhering in full union with the Lord Jesus Christ. I asked the church to put his name in the Synexarion, but they were afraid of the police. But I think he was not the only one. There are many people who died as martyrs and the church was forbidden to celebrate their life. And by doing that, when we are afraid, we deny the work of the Spirit. But my dear brothers and sisters, if we move forward to these four points, the longing for Christ. After a period of dryness, maybe days, maybe weeks, maybe a month, maybe even a year. And we go astray. And then suddenly, we are 
awake. Now I'll go back to the Lord. The Spirit has been waiting and has been knocking on our door all the time. But we did not recognize the knock. This is, this is actually the case. More important is that within that longing, we, in our longing to be with the Lord and to love Him and to worship Him, we suddenly recite ourselves everything in this life is nothing compared to the knowledge and the love that we have for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the work of the Spirit. The Spirit intercedes for us. And I'll send an article by Abbot Sophronius in English about the intercession of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit intercedes in us because he brings people to Christ. The title of the article is the spirit who intercedes with the enemies of God. Another one is about the intercession of the Holy Spirit, about our confession of faith. How do we, how do we recognize that our confession of faith is from the Lord, not from custom? And he speaks of that hidden joy, peace in my heart, Joy that I have eternal inheritance. And the Spirit leads me to reject false teaching. The Spirit of Truth, that's the name of the Spirit, will teach you and me four fundamental facts. Number one, any teaching that plants fear is not from God. Number two, any teaching that tries to separate between me and Jesus is utterly false. Number three, any teaching that magnifies sin is not from God. Because what is magnified is a divine love, not sin. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And the world did not even know him. They don't even believe him. That is the Christian teaching. More important, more important, each teach, any teaching that denies eternal life is earthly. I was asked several times when I was teaching Islam in Cambridge, why aren't you a Muslim? You know the Quran, you read the Quran. Yes, I did. Why? Students from Pakistan, from Iran, from Jordan, from Egypt, why? And I said, because there's no eternal life in Islam. We would be given food and women and drinks and but will not be sharing the divine life of God himself. God will hide in the high heaven and I'll be put into something like a mall to eat and to drink and to have sex also. Just for fun. This is actually a cartoon I used to have of one of the people who were on a suicide mission, uh, expecting that he will have the 70 virgins in paradise, but when he um, pulled the trigger and he dies as, uh, I would say, terrorist rather than a martyr, he goes up to paradise, but it's not paradise. They found 70 Catholic nuns waiting for him with machine guns. It's a cartoon which I copied from one of the newspapers and I put it on the door of my 
uh, study. Cause it's a bit of stare, but it was a real laughter. <laughs> if I take anything other than God, I will be the most miserable man in the world. Why? Well, three reasons. Number one, anything other than God is finite. I add one finite or two finites to my finite life, then I become a prisoner of my finite life. You know? If you put one dollar or another dollar, it makes two dollars, three dollars, ten dollars. No. I want a million. I want eternal. I want the infinite love of God. I want eternity where I would be able to discover my own creator, but to remain eternally ignorant of the purpose for which I have been created and not to know my, crea my creator. That is miserable, real misery. <laughs> Number two. If you give me everything in the universe and I don't have my creator in me, I will grow up greedy, lonely, uh, I become the devil himself. Having power, richness, really, okay, without God. I need God before anything else. Number three. If I receive everything in the universe, visible and invisible, I don't have the creator, what I will be? I'll be a slave of that gift. But if I have God, I'll become the free child. Because a gift can enslave me. But communion in God does not enslave anyone. It brings true eternal freedom. And to freedom we have been called by our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, the Spirit intercedes for me in order to understand. In a unspeakable groaning, Because of our lack of understanding, because of our love is cold, because we are lax, we are not prudent enough to wake up to live our Christian life. The Spirit intercedes for us because of our lack of true knowledge. Because I said early, there is knowledge that comes from books, which is very good. But there is knowledge of God that comes from God through the Spirit. I have a friend who lost her husband and she was really very bereaved. And then people told her about a program on the internet where she can actually meet people to get married again. And she signed and even paid some money. They cut the story short. A man proposed to her and she went out with him. And came back to say, George, I am frightened. <laughs> because the data that, uh, that is on the website is not the reality that I have seen. I said, yes, that is very often is the case. But have you seen anything nice that makes you like him or love him? Give yourself time. You know? Truth is a person. I should say this about hmm, 20 times, 100 times. 
with dealing with a person. The spirit is a person, the son is a person, and the father is a person. None of them is an object or attribute or an item. No, they are living persons in communion. And I am drawn to that communion. And so, my love, my worship, and my faith has to be the love and worship and faith in the three persons. So I better ask the person of the, of the person of the Spirit to reveal to me the triune God and to reveal to me Jesus rather than receive only, only, only knowledge from books and from preachers. No, Lord, reveal yourself to me. I like that incident in the book of Luke, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, just like you and me. We're talking about Jesus, and Jesus came and joined them. They could not recognize him. Yes, of course, some of the commentators said his um, uh, appearance must have changed, yes. All that's possible. You could not recognize him because they were talking about that man, Jesus, who died, and some of the women were at the grave and said that he is alive, but actually we never saw him and don't know. And then uh, Christ, I like that you are Rabiyan, you two stupid ones, and slow in understanding, well, but you are Qulub. Like that expression, you know, your heart is very slow in knowing that Christ should suffer and enter into his glory. And then, after that catechism, which should have been enough to recognize him, they didn't recognize him, their eyes, I love the Arabic, which is just like the Arabic, their eyes umsikat, umsikat aynay, ayna and ma'rifati, could not really see Jesus. And he went with them, uh, it was evening, late evening, and uh, it is in the Mishnah and in the Jewish law, if you're traveling uh, in the evening, uh, you're not allowed to travel because it's very dangerous. You know, there aren't any really lights uh, and bandits can attack you, so come and stay with us. And he did. Didn't ask him, but he was asked and they insisted, so he went. No? And then the gospel says that they knew him at the breaking of the bread. Not before the breaking of the bread. He revealed himself. Prior to that, they could not see him. Could not know him. They were locked into their ego about who is Christ and how uh, his death, his suffering, and the women told them something and they don't know what has happened to this man, Jesus. Now, they suddenly realize that there is that person who breaks bread and he reveals himself, he's alive. Maybe they have seen the wounds, maybe, maybe he said something that only Jesus can say it. Many people believe that it was a Eucharistic celebration, maybe. But the goal of the story or the narrative 
is that we can know Christ Jesus in a personal encounter, in spite of our lack of faith, in spite of the fact that we cannot perceive him. Brothers and sisters, I shall send the two articles by Absophonius to you. I'll check with the Ramis if you have not received them before. On the intercession of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and the other one is on the um, work of the Holy Spirit in the human heart. Please read and let's correspond and see what is there that we did not read. May the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you both now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Dr. George. God bless you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Uh, uh, can, can I ask a question? Of course. Right. Um, I, was, uh, I was reading uh, uh, the last uh, things uh, you, you, you authored on, on cryptology. And uh, one, one statement is just, uh, uh, you know, I, I need clarification. Which, uh, you say that we can nudrik magd asus ga manadarshi, but we cannot, under, we cannot uh, conceive the kainuna. Uh, 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 isn't that like to say that Christ? that the Lord Jesus uh, uh, can, can, in, in the flesh as, as a man cannot, cannot conceive the cannot conceive the, uh, the, uh, the his divinity you know uh, so I, I just need clarification on that statement yes sir what is dominant in the writings of the Father is that we, we cannot understand uh, or perceive the divine existence. Uh, but we can see his divinity, participate in his divinity and receive it. But who is God? We really cannot explore that fully. We only receive what he has revealed. Because you see the basic principles in the hereafter, in the second letter to Corinthians chapter 3, we will see the face of Christ with a unveiled face and we shall be transformed to the same vision. We become, we become what we see. So what we see is what is revealed. But what is the essence of divine life is something that is beyond understanding. God will remain a mystery, in other words. And we live that mystery, receiving the blessing and the knowledge of him and his divine light, but we cannot go beyond that. That is the simple answer. So he is what he is. And we can only perceive certain things, but not everything. Because, you see, if we know God as he is, we have to be God. Because knowledge and life are not separate anymore. They are separate here because of our mortal nature. But in the hereafter, knowledge and life and love and communion are all one entity. Okay. Well, uh, here, here it is the thing. I, uh, the, my question is: Jesus, in, 
in his humility perceived uh, his divinity. So whatever he perceived, he perceived, we perceive. The other thing is that God gives nothing but his being. Uh, so if he gives us his being, we are gods. And this is the whole subject of deification. Yes, but you see, I know you as my friend. And I participate in your life. And we share everything that you have. And I become like you. But the essence of your being is far away, not easy, not even possible for me to perceive who you are in yourself. I can't. I can see only what you reveal and what you share. You tell me about your love, you tell me about friendship, about your generosity, uh, about uh, how I can share everything with you. But the existence, the reason d'être, as they say in reason d'être, as they say in French, the reason for your existence, the uncreated being, is far from our perception. But it is given to us. Oh, we participate in his life, certainly. أعطانا الإسنس بتاعه أعطانا طبيعته أعطانا yes. شخصه yes. but to know uh, to know, well, to know well. the essence of this nature is not possible to know or not to know that his work you know that's uh, the, I, I think I, you know, I, I believe that there will be no uh, what they call حدود there, there's no boundaries if he if he became a man, I have to become a god. Yes, that's correct. But still, there are things in God that is beyond our perception. But you know why you and me don't wait till it happens, and then, and then we will know. Why are you running ahead? Wait. Because 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 if Jesus in humanity didn't perceive the, his essence as uh, as div, uh, as divine uh, cannot cannot be happened he is one person yeah. in the flesh yes but you know i always say to myself what our lord said to peter you don't understand now but you understand later on uh, there are many things i don't understand and later on i will and that does not disturb me what disturbs me in reality is the lack of love for the Lord Jesus. That is the great danger that I have to avoid. And then let that love lead my own knowledge. Okay, sir? Okay, doctors. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Okay, brothers and sisters, if there are any sisters, I shall say goodbye to you, and God bless you, and as always, I say, don't forget to pray for Egypt. It's going through a turmoil. I read an article on Ahram today that is very disturbing indeed, about what happens in Minya. Um, if you don't have it, let me know, I'll send it to you. Very, very disturbing. What was it? Hmm? About what happened in Minya to the, to the Christians. Oh, okay. Article by whom or published? Yeah, by, by, uh, by an editor of Ahram. Ahram. Muslim. For the first time in, in 50 years, the, pic the picture is made clear. I sent it to Ramiz. And Ramiz can just, did you get that Ramiz for me? Ramiz. Ramiz, are you asleep? I didn't get it now, but it, uh, I'll certainly distribute it as soon as I get it. All right, I'll send it to you now, actually, before I go to another meeting. Okay, Great. God bless you Thank and bless you, you. And see you, you next.
next uh, Tuesday. We'll talk about the work of the Holy Spirit in the sacraments. Yeah, now. How do you 